I've been at Jackson Teeth for quite a while and we started doing work with Taronga Zoo back in the end of the 80s and we had a couple of projects at university that were to do with the zoo and just by chance they fell my way and we, we did them. One was the aquarium and the other one was a little bit of uh, work when they were building the new chimpanzee exhibit at Taronga. The waterhole was a facility at the zoo that was halfway around the five to six kilometre circuit at, at Western Plains. You generally drive around or ride a bike, single bike, double bikes, all sorts of things. Great fun. And you go around and you follow the exhibits as you, as you move around the circuit. And when I went out with my wife and daughter, we got around halfway and the Midway Cafe, where the waterhole now is, um, was closed. The zoo wanted to fix that. And, and provide much better facilities for the zoo. When we won the project to, uh, to do the Midway, it was called the Midway Cafe and became known as the Waterhole. It was a circle on a drawing, on a master plan, and it was just a circle to say, you know, this is where we'd like to put the new halfway cafe at, at the zoo. I took that as a lead, as a shape. The, the zoo were probably expecting a rectangle or a series of rectangles. But I thought, oh, let's see where this circle goes. And we, we played around with some ideas and we found out, well, the shape of the building probably had to be longer than it was wide. So I thought, well, elliptical, let's make it a little bit harder. And I was staring at the aerial photograph of the zoo, looking at where the water hole was to go. And I thought, well, if you move the water hole back into the side, it's called, it was going to be called the Waterhole Overlook Cafe. And I thought, well, it's got to overlook something. It's got to be near the moat to, to overlook it. So I was thinking along that line, but I thought, well, as soon as you move that back, you could look along the long axis of two paddocks. And I thought, that this is an opportunity. I then knew of the product from Lysart that was uh, that you could compress at one end so it was like a Japanese fan. You could squash one end of it and the other end would stay open so that meant you could do a curve. So we had to then apply that curve to our building size. So we contacted Lysart and their rep who uh, we'd been dealing with on past projects came in and it was Will. My first question to Will was, Will, had you done tech drawing at school? And he said, yes. And I said, do you know what an isometric circle is? And he said, yes. Well, this is based on an isometric circle. And he got excited. And he said, I can see how that works. We sort of got the nod from Lysart that, yes, this is possible to do. It's an interesting way of using the, the product in a fan shape. Our design was a donut that had a, a courtyard inside that was going to have a, a small exhibit in of tortoises. It also, in the landscape, it had views to the west and then there was a, a sort of a back of house side, but that opened out into the Zufari camping. So it really was a 360, you're sitting in this 360 landscape. So I think the lion exhibit, they cleared vegetation away so you could see the, the Dubbo horizon. So it looked like the plains where you'd see lion in the wild. We had to then prove, we, it's no point drawing a circle if you can't build it. So then we came up with the idea of using an isometric circle as the base geometry uh, and it stepped in uh, towards the courtyard and that stepping was necessary because we had to compress the fans of metal and then restart the compress again to, to get um, some of the tighter radiuses where the larger radiuses were easier to do in one sheet. And that created a step going down in the building, which is not unlike a, a straw hut in Africa that, that steps down, but it, it goes the other way. One of the features that the building has, because it tapers down to the centre and it's circular, the walls aren't parallel, which makes them appear shorter and the ceiling shorter. And what this does is bring the landscape in. is very flexible as, as it's proved with function. You easily have a wedding there. There was a black tie ball for the uh, business awards. They held it out there. Now, an open roof looking out on this big 360 degree lens. There's moon coming up over in the east. There's opportunities out there to link it with um, Zufari. A morning breakfast watching the sunrise from Zufari. You're looking east. You, you can see the sunrise. So I think the zoo envisaged this to be glazed in this building and air conditioned. We just asked the question, well, people are coming in off their bikes. 
if they came into an air-conditioned space, they'll cool down and then they'll go out into the heat. If, if we can provide a space that is, is shady and, and it's well ventilated, we've got some ceiling fans in there, we can get rid of all the windows. The only area that has glass on it is where it butts up against the Meerkat exhibit. When we won the Elisad Award, one of the first things I wrote down all the clients' contacts and the uh, engineers and landscape architects and got on the phone straight away and told them we'd won this award. The circular building wouldn't have happened if Lysart didn't have the roofing profile that you could compress at one end. It just provides that different opportunity to, to create shapes that could follow contours. It's one of my favourite profiles in that it provides a very even, strong shadow 